mwisho wow mighty father in heaven baba mkuu mbinguni the creator of the universe mumbaji wa ulimwengu father look you have gathered his you have gathered us here today baba tazama umetukusanya hapa hivi leo and you have gathered here all people from many nations na umewakusanya hapa watu wote kutoka mataifa mengi lord the hunger baba tazama nja and the thirst na kiu that is sweeping across these people ambayo inafagilia kwa ajili ya watu hawa can only be quenched by you jehovah inaweza tu kutosheleshwa nawe jehovah and i ask you my father in heaven nami nakuuliza baba ngo wa mbinguni jehovah elohim jehovah elohim jehovah bara jehovah bara jehovah chezek jehovah jezek jehovah adonai jehovah adonai jehovah ori jehovah ori the mighty god of israel Mungu mkuu wa Israeli The eternal judge Wa hakimu wa milele Hasho fet Hasho fedi I ask you my father Nina kuuliza baba yangu In the mighty name of Jesus Katika jina kuu la Yesu To arrest the hearts of these people Ukateke nyara mioyo ya hawa watu And instruct them Na ukawaelekeze That they may bear a burden ya kwamba wakabebe mzigo to prepare a holy church kuandaa kanisa takatifu for the glorious coming of the messiah kwa ajili ya kukuja kwa utukufu kwa mesia in the mighty name of jesus katika jina kuu la yesu amen amen and the people of god say na watu wa mungu waseme amen and amen amen na amen you can now be seated in the mighty presence of the lord sasa mwaweza kuketi katika uwepo mkuu wake bwana What a blessing to come to you blessed people. Ni baraka kubwa kiasi gani kuja kwenu watu wabarikiwa. And as he said in Kenya here all the time we've heard it said. Na kama vile inavyosemwa hapa Kenya kila wakati tumeisikia ikisemwa that all protocols observed. Kwamba itifaki zote zikifuatwa. I want first of all to appreciate uh, the senior clergy that Jesus has brought from all over the world here kwanza kabisa ningependa kushukuru wachungaji wa ngazi ya jomba bwana mwewaleta kutoka ulimwenguni kote hapa and also thank the doctors for the tremendous work and dedication na pia kuwashukuru madaktari kwa ajili ya kazi ya ajabu na kujitolea and thank all the organizers of this place na pia kuwashukuru wana waliopangilia mipango mahali hapa And thank the leadership of this county the awesome 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 leadership of this county na pia kushukuru uongozi wa ajabu wa ajabu wa jimbo hili for the tremendous work they are putting to make this a reality kwa kazi ya ajabu ambayo wameifanya ili kuufanya mambo hayakuwa uhalisia i know that i have quite a tremendous message to deliver to you na- within a short time najua kwamba niko na ujumbe wa ajabu mkubwa wa kuwapatia na muda ni mfupi But the Lord will help that I may be able to condense it for you La- that you may not miss a thing. Lakini Bwana atanisaidia ili kwamba nikaiweke kwa mktasari ili kwamba usikose chochote. As you are aware ever since we met Ta- kama vile mjua vyotangia tulipokutana when we last met at Menengai 5 tulipokutana mara ya mwisho Menengai ya 5 The Lord has been speaking. Bwana amekuwa akinena and I just want to share three of them to use that as a foundation for the message the Lord is about to transmit here. Na nataka nitumie tatu miongoni mwa hizo ili kuzindua ujumbe ambao Bwana anataka kuunena hapa. Ziwe msingi. Oh Zim, the way zi. I love accurate translation because this is the mouth of the Lord. Ziwe msingi ya ule ujumbe ambao ninataka kuwasilisha hapa so that they become a foundation our launching pad I, for the message that the Lord is about to deliver here ili kwamba iwe msingi mahali petu pa kuzindua kwa ule ujumbe ambao Bwana anataka kupeana hapa i know that i've shared these messages on radio already najua kwamba nimeshiriki jumbe hizi kupitia masafa ya redio tayari but i'll nevertheless just go through them because of the people here lakini hata hivyo nitazipitia kwa sababu ya watu walioko hapa and we have enjoyed bomet na tumefurahia sana bomet bomet has been able to accommodate us bomet imeweza kutukaribisha and we have had sufficient room for the meeting na tumekuwa na nafasi ya kutosha kwa ajili ya mkutano now i want to share the following blessed people sasa nataka nishiriki yapatayo watu wabarikiwa the vision of saturday january 7th the year 2023 
maono ya Jumamosi tarehe saba mwa Januari mwaka 2023 Again January 7th the year 2023 tena Januari saba mwaka wa 2023 And in that vision na katika hayo maono I was preparing to talk to an international group of senior leaders from abroad. Nilikuwa najiandaa kuongea na ukuhani wa ngazi ya juu kutoka nchi za ngambo. Then I fell asleep. Kisha nikalala. And I saw the visions of the Lord. Nami nikayaona maono ya Bwana. And in that vision, na katika hayo maono, the Lord showed me the beast that appeared. Bwana akanionyesha mnyama aliyejitokeza. I'm just going to summarize a few features. Nitaenda tu kuweka kwa mkutasari vipengee kadhaa that are going to be critical here tonight. Ambavyo vinaenda kuwa nyeti sana usiku wa leo hapa. The beast that appeared. Mnyama ambaye alitokea. And he was huge. Naye alikuwa mkubwa. And then the Lord draws my attention to the mortal wound on his head. Naye Bwana akaleta umakinifu wangu kwa kidonda cha kufisha ambacho kilikuwa katika kichwa chake. To a fatal wound that he had on the head. Kwa kidonda cha kufisha ambacho kilikuwa kichwani mwake. And when I looked at the wound, I could see the fresh wound, I could see the blood and the flesh open. Nami nilipotazama hicho kidonda niliona kidonda kibichi na ningeweza kuona damu na pia nyama. And so as I looked at that fresh wound I realized it's not only on the head but a little bit of the neck also a little part of the neck also. Na pas, basi nilipotazama hicho kidonda nikagundua kwamba hakikuwa tu kwenye kichwa peke yake pia kilienea hadi kwenye shingo. Fresh wound kidonda kibichi it is bloody kiko na damu damu it is a raw a raw wound ni kidonda kibichi an open wound kidonda ambacho kiko wazi but the more i continued looking at the beast lakini zaidi nilipoendelea kumtazama huyo mnyama wa hewani then i was shocked kisha nikashangazwa because the wound disappeared kwa sababu kidonda kikatoweka became healed kikaponywa And after the wound was healed, na baada ya kidonda kuponywa, everybody is now going to have to focus on me for a moment. I know you can write, you are writing, you want to write, but now just focus on me for a moment. Kila mtu mnitazame kwa kitambo kidogo. Najua mnaenda kuandika, lakini mnitazame. I know you want to write, but just focus here now. Najua mnataka kuandika, lakini mnitazame sasa. Once the wound was healed, wakati tu hicho kidonda kilikuwa kimeponywa, then now, kisha sasa, I saw that beast. Nikamuona huyo mnyama, I saw him going to the The holy people of God. Nikamuona akiwaendea watu watakatifu wa Mungu. And he was approaching them from the back, from Nae, the back. Naye alikuwa akiwaendea kutoka nyuma. And look at this now. Natazama hii sasa. With his mouth and teeth, he was catching them from slightly above the waist, slightly above the waist. Na kwa mdomo wake alikuwa anawashika juu ya kiuno kutoka kwa mgongo hapa nyuma. kidogo juu ya kiuno kidogo hivi. Juu ya kiuno kidogo hivi. He was catching them from above the waist. Look at this now. Alikuwa anawashika kutoka juu ya kiuno kidogo. Everybody watch on me now. Kila mtu muniangalie sasa. He's catching from the back from above the waist like this with his mouth. Anawashika kutoka nyuma juu ya mgongo wake namna hii. And this is tarmac here, tarmac. Na hii ni lami hapa. Concrete. Hii ni lami. And then he was doing this. Alafu alikuwa anafanya hivi. Pa 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 pa. And the brain was bursting and pouring there. Na ubongo ulikuwa unapasuka na kumwagika pale. It shocked me very much. Ili nishtua sana sana. And going to another one. Na kwenda kwa mwingine. And catching na kuwauma. Then pa 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 kisha pa 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 destroying the people of God. Akiwaharibu watu wa Mungu. It shocked me very much. Ili nishtua kweli kweli. Cutting some legs are broken there some brain is poured here the A skull is burst. Akikata migu ingine imekatika pale ubongo umemwagika pale fuvu limepasuka. Then I woke up. Kisha nikaamuka. So that really shocked me quite a great deal. Kwa hivyo hiyo ilinishangaza na kunishtua kwa kweli sana. Then I understood. Kisha nikaelewa 
that the Lord had spoken with you. Kwamba Bwana alikuwa amenena pamoja nanyi. In a very severe way, severe is the word. Katika njia ya kuogofia sana, kuogofia ndilo neno. And that's why tonight is so critical. I want you to follow me step by step. We may end late. I'm told K24 is 4:30 and so forth, but just follow me as much as you can catch. Na ndio sababu nataka leo hii munifuate kwa kwa karibu sana kadri vile muwezavyo. Najua K24 itafunga yapata saa 10:30 hivi, lakini munifuate kadri muwezavyo. Wengine wataendelea. Wengine wataendelea. Other TVs are on. Runinga zingine zinaendelea. And so, na hivyo basi, the vicious attack hilo shambulizi ambalo ni kali zaidi and not eating not eating na sio kukula hali but literally destroying lakini kuharibu tu kikamilifu you know you can bite for eating unajua unaweza kuuma ili ukule that is different hiyo ni tofauti biting vicious attack just kuharibu to destroy shambulizi la kutisha ili kuharibu tu then i realized kisha nikagundua that there is something the lord had seen kwamba kuna chokito ambacho bwana alikuwa ameona the lord bwana must have looked at the church globally lazima awe aliliangalia kanisa kote kote ulimwenguni examined her na kulichunguza and watched her na kulitazama and looked at her ways her ways na kuangalia njia zake njia zake and there is something jehovah yahweh must have seen for him to now tell me that and send me to her na lazima kuna kitu ambacho jehovah yahweh alikuwa ameona alafu kuniambia hiyo ili nikuje niwaambie the vicious attack the utter destruction not for eating no shambulizi la kufisha la kuharibu tu sio kwa ajili ya kukula then i realized kisha nikagundua that the lord ya kwamba bwana he must have seen lazima alikuwa ameona that the church of christ globally is joking Joki. Kwamba wanacheza mchezo. Kwamba kanisa la Kristo kote kote ulimwenguni wanacheza mchezo. They are joking. Wanacheza mchezo. They still don't yet understand what is coming. Bado hawajaelewa ni nini ambacho kinakuja. Bado wanacheza mchezo na mzaha. Bado wanacheza mchezo na mzaha. He must have looked at the church. Lazima wewe aliangalia kanisa. And realized that this is a bad game, a bad na, joke. Na kugundua kwamba huu ni mchezo mbaya, mchezo mbaya. That they are behaving. Kwamba wanajiendeleza. As though kana kwamba they are not ready to go into the rapture hawako tayari kwenda katika unyakuzi and that they are behaving na ya kwamba wanajiendeleza as though kana kwamba even if they slide into the tribulation it's okay they will manage hata kama wataingia wangukie ile thiki ni sawa watajimudu tu ai ai how namna gani how somebody hmm. tell me how ni namna gani mtu niambie namna gani The beast I saw yule mnyama niliyemuona he totally overpowered the church the saints and he destroyed them pa 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 and left and went for another one he totally overpowered kikamilifu aliwashinda nguvu wote ule na kuangamiza pa 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 na kumwendea mwingine The Lord must have seen Bwana lazima awe aliona that the church in South Sudan is still joking kwamba kanisa la Sudan Kusini bado linacheza They are behaving as though they want to slide into the tribulation Wanajiendeleza kana kwamba wanataka waangukie waingie kwenye dhiki Oh namna gani Nobody could survive Hakuna mtu ambaye angeweza kunusurika in that vision Katika hayo maono The Lord must have seen lazima bwana alikuwa ameona that in the way the church 
is executing her Christian salvation and mixing with sin. Ya, she is still joking. Ya kwamba jinsi wa Kristo wanajiendeleza katika wakovu wao wa Kikristo na kuchanganya na dhambi bado linacheza. Wanacheza. They are joking. Wanafanya mzaha. Hayo stiene wegos, hayo hugando. Wanafanya mzaha. They are playing around. Wanafanya mzaha. Thinking that even if they enter there, they will manage it somehow. Wakidhani kwamba hata wakiingia pale kuna njia watajimudu. The Lord must have seen. Bwana lazima awe ameona. That the way they have rejected holiness. Kwamba jinsi ambavyo wamekataa utakatifu. It is as though the church is preparing herself to enter into the tribulation. Ni kana kwamba kanisa linajiandaa wenyewe kuingia katika dhiki. This is really what I wanted to begin with. Hiki ndicho kwa kweli nilichotaka kuanza nacho. And I want to put a second vision about this then I'll read some scriptures as a preamble an introduction tonight. Alafu nitaleta maono ya pili na kuungamanisha na hii na nisome andiko kama utangulizi wa uchumbe wa leo. In another vision alia alia katika maono mengine mapema. Thank you for those who are giving me eye contact. Asanteni wale ambao mnanitazama. Because kwa sababu in that vision the Lord showed me the same beast. Katika hayo maono Bwana alinionyesha mnyama huyo huyo much alia mapema. And that beast like a leopard of course. Na huyo mnyama kama chui hata hivyo. And he entered a tent. Na akaingia katika hema. And that tent had a lot of white sheep. White na, sheep. Na hilo hema lilikuwa na kondoo wengi weupe. Don't worry, let me just put the second vision then I'll line it up with scripture. Don't worry. Just focus on this for a moment. Usijali wacha nilete maono ya pili alafu nitaungamanisha na maandiko mnilenge kwanza. So, hivyo basi Inside that tent there were sheep. Ndani ya hilo hema kulikuwa na kondoo. And I could see the green grass which is succulent and well grown. Na ningeweza kuona ile nyasi ya kijani kibichi iliyo na afya. Ile mea mpaka ilikuwa ndefu kiasi hii. Na ambayo ile mea na ilikuwa ndefu the, the, kiasi hii. The grass what had grown so beautifully there. Hiyo nyasi ilikuwa imemea kwa urembo sana pale. This height katika kiwango hicho cha kipasa sana. And succulent. Na ilikuwa na afya. And then na alafu I saw this beast like a leopard same beast. Nikamuona huyo mnyama kama chui mnyama huyo huyo. He entered there. Akaingia mle ndani. But look at this now. Lakini tazama hii sasa. What he did there? Kile alichokifanya pale shocked me. Kilinishtua kweli kweli. Because kwa sababu some of them he only did bite the head and throw off the head from the body. Baadhi ya wengine wale kondoo aliwauma na kutoa kichwa kutoka kwa mwili na kutupa huko kando. Others he only did bite the stomach. We, we, wengine akauma tu akatoa matumbo. So you found it dead there but the stomach has been eaten. Unampata amekufa mle ndani lakini tumbo limeliwa. Some of the legs were there the parts of ba, the body. Baadhi ya ma, ma, wengine miguu ilikuwa pale na sehemu sehemu za mwili. And what shocked me? Na kilichonishtua zaidi. Is the way he would kill them after biting because the grass the grass was disturbed. Ni jinsi ambavyo alikuwa anawaua baada ya kuwauma manake nyasi ilikuwa imesumbuka sana. And covered with blood but disturbed like this disturbed. Unaona you can see this one was killed here. Aliua huyo hapa. Aliua mwingine hapo. Where, where he was killing one. He was killing the other. Ungeona nyasi ambayo imeinama imesumbuka sana kabisa na iko na damu. Ungeona huyo aliuliwa hapa na mwingine aliuliwa pale na kuna damu pale. Let us start reading right away before we got the second and third vision. Hebu tusome moja kwa moja kabla tuende katika maono ya pili na ya tatu. The book of Daniel chapter 7 how is he called? Kitabu cha Danieli mlango wa 7 anaitwaje? And then I'll be giving you the message real quick this is introduction. Alafu nitakuwa nikiwapatia ujumbe huu ni utangulizi. This is introduction. Huu ni utangulizi. Daniel chapter 7 blessed people. Daniel mlango wa 7 watu wabarikiwa. It says the following. Anasema yafuatayo. Daniel 7 verse 8. Daniel mlango wa 7 mstari wa 8. While I was thinking about the horns. Okay, utasoma kwa hiyo tafadhali. Wakati nilipokuwa ninafikiri kuhusu pembe hizo. Because today this is just introduction and the three like this before I start the message. And there are three parts of one big message. Three big parts. Again, 
while I was thinking about the horns, wakati nilipokuwa ninafikiri kuhusu pembe hizo, there before me was another horn. Mbele yangu kulikuwa na pembe nyingine. A little horn, ambayo ni ndogo, which came up among them. Iliyojitokeza miongoni mwa zile kumi. And three of the first horns were uprooted before it. Pembe tatu za mwanzoni zilingolewa. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being pembe hii ilikuwa na macho kama ya mwanadamu and a mouth that spoke boastfully na mdomo ulionena kwa majivuno the bible calls him the small horn biblia inamuita pembe ndogo and that is related to how he will appear na hiyo inahusiana na jinsi atakavyojitokeza very simple and very subtle raisi sana na imetiliwa mkazo kujificha okay whatever Daniel chapter 9:26 Danieli mlango wa 9 mstari wa 26 He says the following Anasema yafuatayo After the 62 servants baada ya majuma 60 na mawili The anointed one will be put to death that is the Messiah Mupako wa mafuta atakatiliwa mbali huyo ni masihi And will have nothing because he does not take the kingdom at that time Wala hatabaki na kitu kwa sababu hauchukui ufalme kwa wakati huo And he says the people of the ruler who will come. Na anasema watu wa mtawala atakayekuja. So here they call him the ruler who will come. Hapa wanamuita mtawala atakayekuja. Will destroy the city. Atawataribu mji. And the sanctuary. Pamoja na mahali patakatifu. The end will come like a flood. Mwisho utakuja kama mafuriko. War will continue until the end. Vita vitaendelea mpaka mwisho. And the desolations have been decreed. Now ukiwa umeamriwa. Here he is being called the ruler who is to come. Hapa anaitwa mtawala ambaye atakuja. Revelation 13. Ufunuo 13. Verses 1 to 3 just mustari, as an introduction. Mustari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu utangulizi tu. That I may be able to bring everybody on the same board yeah. and highlight for you the danger that the lord is raising in that vision ili the nika, danger ili nikamlete kila mtu katika ukurasa moja na nikaweze kunukuu hatari ya hayo maono in revelation 13:1 and 3 says ufunuo 13 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu inasema the dragon stood on the shore of the sea yule choka alisimama ufuoni mwa bahari and i saw a beast coming out of the sea nami nikamwona mnyama akitoka ndani ya bahari so here is called the beast hapa anaitwa mnyama coming out of the sea akitoka katika ndani ya bahari it had ten horns mnyama huyo alikuwa na pembe kumi and seven heads na vich, vichwa saba with ten horns with ten crowns on his horns akiwa na taji kumi kwenye hizo pembe zake and on each head a blasphemous name na juu ya la kichwa kulikuwa na jina la kukufuru Somebody listen to verse two. Mtu sikiliza mstari wa pili That you may understand the message the Lord is giving in this vision Ili kwamba mkaelewe ujumbe ambao Bwana anaupeana katika haya maono He said the beast I saw resembled a leopard Anasema mnyama yule niliyemuona alifanana na chui but had the feet like those of a bear lakini alikuwa na miguu yake ilikuwa kama ya dubu and a mouth like that of a lion na kichwa chake kama cha simba i thank uh, the, the, his excellence the governor for coming professor hilary is here na mshukuru let us clap to the lord governor professor hilary balochok mwenyewe yuko hapa tumpigie bwana makofi the awesome leadership of this county uongozi wa kupendeza wa jimbo hili that has hosted us all along since we came ambao wamekuwa wenye jiu wetu tangia tulipokuja and so he's saying here na hivyo basi anasema hapa that the beast he saw ya kwamba mnyama aliyemuona was like a leopard alikuwa anafanana na chui and then he says alafu kisha anasema he had the the paws the feet like those of a dubu of a, of a bear alikuwa na miguu kama ya dubu and then he had the mouth like a lion alafu alikuwa na na kinywa kama cha simba we know too well tujua vyema kabisa that each one of these animals here ya kwamba kila moja wapo ya hawa wanyama hapa that the lord is representing here i'm placing as a combination ambao, to define the beast ambao bwana anawaleta hapa kama kuunganishwa kumuelezea mnyama each one of them kila mmoja wao is utterly vicious ni wa kuhatarisha wa kufisha kweli kweli revelation chapter 13 Uf- verses 1 to 3 that's where we are if you have just walked in ufunuo mlango wa 13 mstari wa kwanza hadi watatu hapo ndipo tupo kama umetembea tu na kuingia sasa hivi He's saying, Anna Sema, where is my lead camera K24 is here? 
Kamera yangu. Thank you. Asante. He say. Anasema. He say. Anasema. That for Yahweh. Kwamba kwa Yahweh. For the Lord Yahweh to transmit the correct message to the church. Kwamba kwa Bwana Yahweh kutambulisha ujumbe ulio wazi ulio mzuri kabisa kwa kanisa that the church may understand the gravity and the seriousness and the viciousness ya kwamba kanisa likaelewe unyeti na jinsi ilivyo ya kumaanisha that the church may stop playing games with holiness kwamba kanisa liache kufanya mizaa na michezo na utakatifu that the church kwamba kanisa may stop playing around with her salvation liache likome kucheza cheza na wokovu wake that the church ya kwamba kanisa may take her salvation now more seriously likachukue wokovu wake sasa kwa kumaanisha zaidi that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now make a turn around and change her moral conduct ya kwamba likapate kugeuka na kubadilisha tabia na hulka zake that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now begin to take the matters of sin very very seriously likaanze kuchukua maswala ya dhambi kwa kumaanisha sana sana that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now consider the holiness of god with greater gravity ya kwamba sasa lizingatie utakatifu wa mungu na uzito mkubwa kabisa kabisa that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now be able to change her ethical conduct ya kwamba sasa libate kubadilisha tabia zake that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now begin to embrace righteousness more seriously lianze sasa kukumbatia uhaki kwa kumaanisha zaidi that the church ya kwamba kanisa may now begin to go back to repentance sasa lianze kurudi kwa toba the lord bwana he does this anafanya hivi and this is the same thing he did for me in that vision na hiki ndicho kitu alichonifanyia mimi katika hayo maono in that vision he presents a peace that is virtually indomitable kwa katika hayo maono anamleta mnyama wa hayawani ambaye hawezi kushindwa kabisa it is insurmountable hawezi kushindwa you cannot hawezi kabisa and he says here na anasema hapa that he is like a leopard ya kwamba ni kama chui and he has the feet like a bear na ana miguu kama ya dubu and he has a mouth like a lion na ana mdomo kama wa simba let us just take the leopard alone hebu kwanza tumwangalie chui peke yake all of you know how bloody how bloody the leopard is nyinyi nyote mwajua jinsi ambavyo yule chui ni wakufisha kweli kweli wakumwagadamu maybe just, Waku just be, be telling him things at the background so the right message is transmitted throughout yeah. so how bloody the leopard is nyote mwajua jinsi ambavyo chui ni wakumwagadamu the leopard chui they don't they don't want to look at human eyes hawataki kuangalia macho ya binadamu a leopard never wants to look at the eyes of a man never chui kama katu hataki kuangalia macho ya mwanadamu kama katu hataki that's why the leopard normally jumps and takes the skin of the back of your head and pull it to cover your eyes before he eats you ndio maana chui huruka kwanza na kuchukua ngozi kutoka kwa kichwa na kufunika macho kabla akukule okay mimi tena today let me tell you look at this now this is now the message which i have not yet begun and these three are introductions so either you translate it right or somebody else and we are live on tv she is right there she is very powerful in this message she has translated it before So, hivyo basi, he say, anasema, the leopard, chui, is so vicious. Yeye ni mkali sana. Is so murderous.